Our speaker is somebody that I met at Brock Park Camp. I went to his talk and I thought it was just absolutely perfect for my group. And I need you to tell me he's French. <coughs> and so I want to know, have, do people name you uh, in the ang anglicized way? Or, or are you Bertrand Azad? Um, can you hear me? Uh, <coughs> really depends on who mentioned my name. So, okay. you know, the, the French name is very hard to pronounce, so usually I get like Bertrand. Uh, but my wife is from Peru, so I get the Latin version anyway. The Latin version, or the Texas version would be their train. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and the last name is actually pretty interesting to live in Texas for the last name, like Hazard anyway. But that is true. <laughs> Being a Hazard in Texas, that is, what is it? Right. Okay. And uh, so anyway, he is the VP of marketing, uh, has been a VP of marketing in a number of different organizations, but he's a VP of marketing currently with a company called Trust Radius. And I give you that's one of those or whatever. I want to thank Kathy for doing this at no clue what, you know, the launch pad club. I'm still trying to pronounce the five words together. Words, and I've been listening for the last 25 minutes, and I'm mesmerized by this thought that you guys are providing to job seekers. Uh, I think someone mentioned that was new, but even for me, who, who uh, haven't necessarily looked for a job for a little bit of a while, but it's fascinating the support that uh, you guys have put together. So I definitely know that if one day I, I can help, I'll help them more, because uh, I think that's a great organization. Um, having said that, uh, I usually do this stuff with smaller groups, it's a little bit intimidating, uh, and I try to turn it, it's, it's the goal of this conversation, I mean the goal of this presentation is going to be a conversation. Uh, feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions, we can leave some time at the end. Uh, it started with five slides, I put a few more because I felt like five was, you know, maybe too small, not enough, and I put some more concrete examples so you will see an updated version from what you've seen at product camp. Um, but the whole, the whole purpose of this presentation is really to try to help you guys uh, through my own experience and from what I'm going to share, and I'm pretty blunt in terms of what I say, so there's some stuff you're going to like to hear, there's some stuff you're not going to like to hear, but the purpose of this is really for you to maybe pick one thing uh, that hopefully will help you to be even more successful in your process of securing the next job. And it's not just a job. I'm a big believer that uh, and it surprised a lot of people, but when you're in a job search, it's, it's like a relationship. You know, it's, it's a two-way process. You have the right and you should be looking for the job that you really care, not just a job. Uh, the problem is, and that's why it's most, you know, everyone who's getting into a job uh, situation is always, you know, stressed is that, you know, you need the money. So you tend to make sometimes decisions and you tend to kind of like be stressed because it's like, well, I need to pay the bills again the month. I feel that, I understand that. Uh, but I'm just trying to make sure that you also realize, and for me it's important that people understand like it's about looking at a job that they really want to do. Because if you're not, not, looking, not doing a job that you really want to do in a company that you really want to work for, you're going to be looking for a job in another six months, and it's a waste of time. Um, so having said that, um, Kathy mentioned I'm a VP marketing at Trust Radius. It's a local company, a uh, four-year-old company. The founder of Trust Radius was the founder of Confio, one of the people near Confio. Um, but took this company from zero to uh, 300 million, sold it. Uh, we are 25 people, so we're still kind of like early stage. Uh, in a nutshell, we are a business software review site uh, for business software. So, uh, for instance, you know, it's a, a little piece of advice, but if you happen to know some software and you want to show that you know this type of software, let's say you want to apply for a job in marketing operations, I got a few people talking about project management. If you know traffic management software, you should go and write a review, in that review, link it into inside your LinkedIn profile. This is something that the employers are going to look for. Um, so just, just think about it. Uh, but it's not about frustrations, it's not about myself. It's Like I said, it's really about uh, you guys. So we already talked, uh, we've already talked about it uh, with my accent. I'm not from Paris, Texas. <laughs> um, I'm actually not from Paris, France. Uh, I like to joke and say I'm not from Paris, I'm from France, I'm from Normandy. Uh, so I'm a country boy, so that's really the thing I have in common with Texas. Um, and I came, uh, I came to the US, uh, I actually never really worked in France. Uh, and, and I have no desire to go to work in France. 
Um, but I went to the UK to do my studies. Uh, I decided after the studies, well, if I did my studies in the UK, I should go back and maybe take a first job, be there for six months, and then come back to France. I was in the UK for six years. And then uh, one day, uh, I was uh, I was like thinking I was going to be laid off, and uh, I started to work for a company based in Houston. Uh, and I was working for their offices in London, and uh, I said, well, I think I'm going to quit because you guys just acquired another company. You don't need two marketing people to be the same in the same role, and they said, why don't you come to the US, it's in Houston, there's big highways, uh, why don't you come for six months? This was 17 years ago. So, I, I actually believe that my next move will be Australia, uh, since I, did, I tend to move west. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, for now I'm here, uh, and now I've got dual citizenship, so uh, I can have flexibility, lots of flexibility. The, the other thing, and that's uh, probably more important, is that yeah. I've been in your shoes. I've looked for jobs, and I know at Product Camp I always shock people when I say that uh, I worked for 25 years, I, I actually look a little bit younger than my, my age, but I'm, I'm on the older side. Um, and I really believe that I've spent at least a thousand hours looking for a job. And, and when I look for a job, I'm a machine. I'm like, wake up, like for me, I wake up early in the morning, that's how my brain works. But if I was tomorrow to start a job, I wake up every day at 5.15, tomorrow I would start for a job and wake up at 5.15. And I, I just apply the same methodology because I believe that applying for a job is actually a full-time job, which is why I hate, personally, working for a company and trying to find another job because I just cannot do that. I'm passionate about what I do, so it's hard for me to go and find something else. But the reasons why I believe uh, I, I, can, I can hopefully help you is I'm not, a, I'm not a recruiter, per se. I'm not a consultant. That's not my job. I, I, I started to put these presentations because I was tired to see lots of people coming in front of me and candidates, and I was like, they keep making the same mistake. It's annoying. So I'm creating a presentation, five slides, I'm going to do a product camp. This was two years ago. I'm a product marketing guy. I said, well, how can I make my title exciting so that people vote for me? So I said, why? I won't recruit you. 70 people turn up, and since then I've done about this presentation six or seven times. So it's, it's pretty interesting. But that's the first thing, so I've been looking for jobs. I mean, when I was in the UK, I probably changed it about five or six times. And I did the typical mistakes when you're young. I was, I, I wanted to become CEO of the company I was working for after six months in the company. It's not good. So I left with other job, but my parents thought I was crazy. And in France, they used to work for the French administration, so they don't change jobs every day. Uh, I've, uh, I've been fired, and you know, it's unpleasant, but probably one of the best experiences. That was unpleasant. And, uh, and I've also looked for, for different jobs. So I have my personal experience from that standpoint. The second thing is, because I'm, I've been building marketing organizations from the ground up for quite a few uh, companies, I've, I've had to recruit a lot of people. I've seen lots of candidates. Uh, and these days, I actually see every candidate that comes through uh, at our company. So even yesterday, night, I had uh, an interview with a candidate for a sales job. Uh, and the third thing is, I don't know why, I don't think it's because I'm French, but um, people for some reasons ask me what I think about how I should approach jobs, and, and for some reasons what I tell them is different from what they've heard or read. So hopefully that's still the case. <laughs> Maybe no, you guys seem to have like, such a great network and lots of resources already, but hopefully I can bring something different uh, to the table. Um, and, uh, and what I've noticed is that, like I said, I think people make, and I, I'm into this five mistakes, three or four mistakes, the fourth, the fifth one is it's more of a wrap up. But I see people making the same mistakes again and again. And it's that. Because, you know, I, I love to say, but it's like one mistake, it's okay, but if you repeat the same mistake, you haven't learned something. Um, so I, I also have young kids, so I'm trying to teach my nine year old about the concept of what Nelson Mandela said, which I think is very important. You either win, you never lose. You learn. And it's an important thing to even think about in terms of job search. I was talking with someone yesterday who asked my advice and saying, I was frustrated. I thought I was going to get this job. I didn't get it. And I said, it's probably for the right reason. You know, something happened. The Arabs talk about me too. There's a reason. So things happen for reasons. But you have to work for it. So without further ado, that was a little bit of an introduction. This is to me the most important slide and the most important one that we should be thinking about. Um, and, and I feel the mistake that job candidates uh, and job seekers are making is that they can't clearly articulate what makes them different. I think someone mentioned it earlier, so I think you guys have been talking about it, so it shouldn't necessarily be new. But it's really important to, there's some really critical work, you know, clearly articulate what makes you different. 
And, uh, and in, in marketing, we use this concept of USP, which is the unique selling proposition, or unique selling value proposition. But it's, it's think about Apple back in the days with the iPhone. They came out with the iPhone, there was an MP3 player. They could have said, you know, we have this new MP3 player, it looks good because, you know, we like the design, and it has, you know, uh, 10,000 gigabytes. No, the other thing was like 10,000 songs in your pocket. Brilliant marketing sentence, but within one sentence, that describes what makes them unique. And you, as a job seeker, have to be able to do that. I mean, there's something, another thing which I think you use in sales, but with the 30 second elevator, elevator pitch, you have to be able, really, in 30 seconds, to say to someone, this is what I'm looking for. I'm actually, I thought it was pretty impressive of people introducing themselves and, and actually doing a pretty good job. I mean, I was like, okay, I, I feel I get what, what you want. But I tell you, marketing or product marketing, because I'm in the product camp, uh, I get people coming to me and say, well, I've done product management, I've done product marketing, I can be also a project manager, and I did this and I did that, and I'm like, I have no clue, and I'm going to try not to swear, but I have no clue <laughs> what you're looking for. And I've got ADD. I, 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 I need to move very fast. So, when you, when, why I think it's very important, because I think that most people, when they start a job, uh, and sometimes you're forced, and someone mentioned they did later, the next thing is, okay, uh, I've got my resume, let's go ahead and start to send a thousand resumes to a thousand companies, and let's pray. Uh, so I will be helped, so praying works in Texas. Um, but sometimes just might be good enough. For the weather, it might work, right? Uh, um, but, but, you know, it's not just good enough. Um, so, to me, it's like, I'm always saying, and that's always weird, but I always say to people, just, just take a step down for one second, take a deep breath, um, and then try to think about, you know, what's, what's specific about you. And it's really about, and this is like, you know, if you don't stand out for the crowd. I like that picture, so I put that picture, but you need to stand out for the crowd, right? I mean, there's lots of people, when they come to the job, um, you know, a lot of people look very similar in their resume. A lot of people in their covers there look very similar. Uh, similar. A lot of people, you know, will come and you have to be able to show what makes you different. And everybody can have that. I mean, I hear sometimes like, ah, oh, but I don't have the same experience. You know, and sure, so what? You might have skills that nobody, someone else doesn't have. You might have a personality, and I'll come back to that, but personality is so important that someone else doesn't have. You might have asked questions actually better than some other people have asked. Uh, you might have a non-working related, you were talking about how important it is to have non-working related, especially in the US, I found that. I mean, people for some reason, I signed up for Product Camp without knowing what it was, uh, and helped it build to where it is. And they're always refer saying, wow, it's, it's really impressive what you do at Product Camp. And I'm like, there is a side thing. I didn't realize that, you know, it's so important to do things and activities on the side. So, when you, when you think about, you know, doing what I call your self-assessment, and some people can use, you know, and we'll use power coach and, and we'll use trainings and so on. Uh, I always say to people, it, it's really important for you to understand what, what you care. Uh, you know, I thought, again, that the, 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 the people who just introduce themselves seems to be really passionate about what they are doing. And that needs to transpire, you know, keep, keep doing that. But this, sometimes people are not sure about what they care. I think it's important to understand in what environment you like to strive. Again, not think about what's available out there, which companies, just think about for yourself. Uh, if you don't like risk, you know, don't work for a small company. If you want to be rich, don't work for a startup. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not the thing. This is not how you make, you know, it's a better thing to make money. There's always ways to do it. Uh, if, you, if, you like, uh, if you like to, to work in an environment where uh, there is less risk, you might want to work for a bigger company. If you're passionate about games, there's a whole gaming industry at the time. If you're, if you're passionate about technology, there's a whole industry. I started in the consumer industry, you know, working for Kellogg's, cereals, and books. Um, and then I ended up going into the banking industry. And uh, if I was in the banking industry, I would probably be in New York right now. Um, I would probably be highly stressed, look 10 years older, um, Probably my wealth would be much important than what it is today, but I hated this environment. Now, it doesn't mean it's not a good environment to work with. It just did not fit my personality. I like to build stuff. I like things to move. I like, I like to get stuff done. Uh, 
and and uh, and and so I think for you to understand like you know the environment that you feel you can strive, you know, I, I used to joke and you can say it's very childish, but I was 21. I was like, what do I really want to do? And at the time I was in London, I said, well, I, I always seems to be fascinated by top models. I woke up since then, but you know, <laughs> so I, sh I should have liked to have the top models to become a marketing guy. I did. Well, I didn't get any response, so I was a bit disappointed. But the point is, like, I was, I was just trying to do things, thinking, what do I like? What, what do I feel I would really enjoy doing? And, and I think it's really important to do that, because, again, think about the personality, think about what environment, think about skill. I, I, you know, people tend to say, well, I'm a project manager, so that's, my, that's what I can do. It's, don't describe yourself as a project manager, think about your skills. I, I'm a fantastic project manager. I get shit done. I just... <laughs> Man. But I seriously, I'm an excellent marketer for the reasons that I get stuff done. And the truth is, like, if you're an excellent project manager, you can do jobs in different areas. Because it doesn't matter. It's always a case of, we have a problem, we need to try to solve it, we need to get people together, we need to get them to coordinate, and we need to be either on time and within budget. If you can do that, you can find it. And, and it will affect the process of industry, the process of things. So think about skills that you have to offer. And then ultimately, what makes you different? I mean, that, that's really the thing that uh, it is truly important uh, of like, you know, what's, what's very unique and different. So now, I, I have, I've been lucky. Um, when I was uh, actually 22 or 23 in the UK, uh, I ended up meeting this guy who had a, a blow tie. Uh, and I was like, mm, that looks like a big wave. <laughs> but for some reason, I connected with him. He was a business cyclist. He was like, yes, just do a couple of pitches in, 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 uh, in China and a few other things. Uh, but I actually went through where he helped me understand about who I was. Uh, and, and I'm one of these people where I can say I've done a psychoanalysis without being in a way, but I didn't do it because I felt I was sick, I did it because I wanted to do it. And, and it's like, if you can understand yourself, you understand it better than the other ones. I'm not saying you should do that, don't go to a train tomorrow, that's not my advice. Uh, but sometimes it helps when you have someone else who can help you to do that, and that's why you've got people who offer to do that. Uh, but if you don't decide to go that route of having someone that it professionally does it, uh, the trick I always tell people is to really just do it. This is me like writing uh, last night, it's kind of flatter, but, but ask people that know you, you know, people that you work with, people that might have been your boss. People that uh, are your friends, people that are your family. Send them an email, uh, a letter, or whatsoever. And ask them about two things. What do you think is my biggest strength? And ask them, you know, it might be two or three more. Uh, and what do you think people would enjoy working with me? And what matters is not the individual response. What matters is the patterns of what you're going to get. And then I can guarantee you're going to start seeing someone, and you're going to see a pattern of someone saying, oh, People think that I'm really good because I'm very, uh, I'm a great person, or because uh, I'm a hard worker, right? I had, a, I had someone that was working for us for six months as an intern, and at the end I was like, I'll find you a job if you don't find by yourself, and I knew she would find a job, and she did within a couple of weeks, um, but she had to ask her and say, well, what do you think is your biggest trend? And for her, it was about, well, I've done a little bit of this marketing, a little bit of that. And I was like, I'm sorry, you're 24 and you're a hard-working lady. These days, with the millennial generation, finding hard-working young people is hard. Which, by the way, if you're not a millennial generation, that's something I would emphasize. Because that's a problem that every single employer I know in town, every CMO, at least in the technology space, we always end up saying, oh, we're looking for talent. It's hard to find talent. We get all these young kids, yeah, they're great, but they give up after six months. Because the way, and, you know, I don't, that's my personal opinion, but there's a great book out there about how to raise, uh, how, how to raise a parent, uh, which I think was written by the dean uh, at Stanford. Uh, but part of the how the kids have been in education in the last 20, 25 years, where we tell them to do exactly and this is, you know, the next thing you need to do, it's actually a challenge in the workforce. And, and I found that a lot of people with great kids, but the concept of working hard is not one that you know, as well. So if you have that, if you've been really working hard, that's something that I would emphasize. But the point is, there will be something coming out of that that you don't expect. I've learned stuff about myself by asking other people, like, a boss of mine said, one of your strengths is you can manage up. I think, what? What does it mean, manage up? And he was like, you are really good at communicating back with me, which means like you're really good at communicating back with 
the management, which is why people you know, really enjoy it. Another person said, you have this unique ability to get people in other departments to do things for you that they would never do otherwise. <laughs> and I see that like a skill that you can copy. And I still don't know, honestly, how. I mean, I think it's a personality thing. But this is the type of things that comes out. Now, why is it important? It's because you need to, once you've done this exercise, and that's why I spend so much time on these slides usually, it's once you've done this exercise, you need to be able to summarize. If today I was to go after the session and say, okay, what are you looking for? Within less than 30 seconds, you need to take less than 50 words, probably taking more. But you should need to be able to describe what you are, who you are, what you're looking for. I mean, the, the days are long, lengthy, CV, resumes, presentations. I don't know why in the US there's a set, I think I've seen resumes in the US that seems to be pretty much like a book. Uh, and people feel like you have to write everything. No. And I come back to that. I just want to know what's interesting, high level. Keep something for when I meet you. Because that's when I need you to surprise me. You don't need to have a resume. A one page a resume but is, is enough. I actually, even for me, I, I, if, I, if I get a job and we're looking for people, if I don't go and look for people, because I do that a lot, so just, you can ask me how I do that, but I do full meeting, I will we'll go and find people. Uh, but if we apply, if we put a job out there and we get like resumes, I will, I will see a name, I will see a cover letter, and then I will be like, oh, let me look for meeting. I'm not even opening the resume, I first go to LinkedIn. And my first impression on LinkedIn is so pretty fun, I'm sure. You. That's part of what you guys are explaining a lot. But anyway, once you've done that, you know, and I didn't want to put my face for the sake of putting my face, but uh, this is how I summarize myself. I've done a lot of stuff. I mean, I've been in marketing, I've been in sales, I've done PR, I've been in channel marketing, I've worked internationally, I've worked, I've done a lot of stuff. But if I ask people what I do, and in fact, I believe that when I've been describing a little bit myself, when I use the fact that like, I can scale marketing organizations from the ground up, that's the thing that I keep saying. Go ahead. I'll say it's more mess in here. I was born over there. I'm uh, going to change that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a human being. I make mistakes. But that's a good spot. You have an eye. That's a skill. Um, yeah, we can talk about Marseille. I come from Normandy, so when I did my study in Marseille, I thought it was another country altogether. So uh, I did a very international study. But the point is, and, and, and again, when I look at people and send me and say, I look at my LinkedIn, I'm like, oh, they Brad, but it's so long. I have no idea what someone is trying to look for. And so achieving this is one of the most difficult but the most important things that you can do. And, and, and it's not, and again, it is not something uh, that is uh, very easy. But if you've got that, that's what you have on LinkedIn. That's what you're going to put in a cover letter. That's what you're going to tell someone when you do an interview. Also remember, you're going to meet with more than one person. We debrief all the time on candidates that come through. And we're looking for constant pattern. If you, if you, if you go to a job and you talk to three people, and you come across as three different personalities, that's that's not a good sign. But if you come across and everyone says, you know, this person is exactly what they want, this is the type of things that I like, and I like this more than that, you know, then the combination, but it's like at least the consistency things across people. Does that make sense? Is this like obvious? Non obvious? Okay. Uh, the second, <laughs> second thing that pisses me up is people not doing their homework. I mean, you apply for a job and you barely look at what the company is doing when you look at it. I had people who are product marketers, I guess they don't know what product marketing is about, apply for a job, come for an interview, they've never looked at the website of the company. I'm a nice guy. I spend the next 15, 20 minutes trying to do some conversations knowing that I do it because I'm nice. But sometimes I would be like, thanks sir, but oh, thanks, man. Uh, but you've just wasted my time. So doing your homework is very important. And the reasons I, I think you can do it is when you reverse and, and you know, there's flip what I call the flip my funnel. It's not about, you know, applying to hundreds of jobs. It's about finding the companies you want to work for. I mean, in Austin, 
usually when people tell me, well, especially in the technology space, so that's, that's more my space, they tell me, I want to do this, this is the type of thing, I'm like, we should look at Indy. For you, that's Indy. For you, that's more of a Dell. For you, that's really a startup. Well, there's been potentially some people that you might want to connect and talk to. But if you pick companies, and by the way, most of the companies don't advertise the jobs that they offer. I mean, you already know that. Uh, so I'm always like, don't limit yourself to companies that only have jobs that, you know, where it's right on their website. Most of the time, most companies apply. I've seen it in the past, especially in the US, because of all the laws. Uh, you have to put a job in some companies when they're big enough, officially, and it has to be there for seven days. It's part of the legal requirement. The candidate has already been found. So pick the companies, pick the environment, pick the industry, pick the companies, pick the, and you know, you do all your network and your connections, but, but it's important. And if you do that, then you can say, okay, Indeed seems to be an interesting company. Um, they have a great uh, lunch service with chefs, so I like to eat, but I'm just <laughs> For me, it works. It's, it's five minutes away from my house. I hate to commute more than 30 minutes. I think it's kind of better thing to do in life. So anyway, it's not always the case, but, but what I'm saying is like I would be first looking and say, okay, Hindi, why? What are they doing? That's interesting. I'm reading their website. Oh, I know some people there. Oh, I know people that maybe know some people there. You know, it's doing that homework in your head, and then, then you can go and apply. If let's say a job is advertised, apply for the job. And then the cover letter, come on. It's not too hard to do a cover letter. It doesn't have to be long, but it has to be pertinent to the job and the role you're applying. I mean, for me, if I was to apply tomorrow to a job, I would say, I've seen this job advertised, you know, I'm really interested in what your company is doing. Your company is doing, and I really think I could be a great asset because I've got these one or two skills that I think would terribly, will really apply. Give me a chance, and I would love to talk to you. Done. But it's, 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 it speaks to the fact that you actually looked at the company, it speaks to the fact that you're trying to tell me what makes you different, and it just speaks to the fact that you're not like one of the thousands of people who sends this boring copy paste resume that they found online, or that their carrier advice office have told them that they need to copy and paste. Um, this is a real email. And that shows you how I can be frustrated sometimes. But this is the email to uh, the person in charge of placing MBA students. There's not too many MBA universities or universities doing MBAs, and think about maybe the biggest one here in Texas. But I was, I found that, so when I applied, when I was looking for people looking for job, we have a job, and I kind of like, had some candidates coming. Some of the worst couple that ever were coming from the people who have spent the most money to apparently be the next generations of leaders. I had people who had uh, no cover, people who had a cover letter with the wrong position. That's, that sucks. I mean, that, that'd be too bad. You know, I want to apply for a job, I look great, and oh, that's not the wrong job. Uh, and, there were, and there was no tie. And, and, and there's a stream of females I've been putting there with the, that person who was like, how did you take and sign? Oh, I'm so sorry. And I offered to come and present to them, actually, to have to do this presentation. But in their case, it's not good because that office is, is telling people, if you're doing an MBA, you need to start an introduction sign. I'm John Kipper, whatever, and I can do business operations, finance, HR, recruit, I can do everything. But that's not good to fly. So I mean, spend the time on the cover letter. That's really something um, which is uh, super, super important. And then, go ahead. I've been doing this on and off for a long time, and I've seen recommendations all over the map. Mm -hmm. Attach your cover letter to your resume at the end. Attach it at the beginning. Attach it separately. I've had people tell me, no, we don't want a cover letter. I've attached a cover letter, and they said, no, we didn't look at it. Um, you know, okay. so it's, it's necessary sometimes because you get maybe one in ten, but not sufficient. No, but you, you know, you have to play the maximum. You have to score large. You know, it's like it's like For, good right, yeah, yeah. For me, <laughs> it's it's a way. Well, it's a way to differentiate yourself. So you know, do I do cover? I haven't done cover letters since I was working in the UK. Actually, because the next few jobs I got, I got introduced to the jobs. And people got to say, you should apply, you should just come for an interview. Actually, I didn't apply. I went for an interview, and then they said, well, you need to apply officially. Yeah. So, but it took, you know, a thousand hours of looking for jobs before. And to me, it's like, 
you want to stand out uh, in the UK, I would go to a job. I would always have a tie. And this was when at the time people were like, ah, oh, but you look like, you know, tie, you look too serious. And this is the bow tie guy who told me to put a tie, so I, I guess that was the inference. <laughs> but the point is that people were standing outside, well, this guy, this guy is making the little extra, the little heifer. Uh, for me, it matters because it's the way to stand out. Now you have systems these days that when you can't even put a cover letter. Um, but you can also look at it differently. Uh, I've got people uh, that sometimes I, I, I help and they say, well, I want to try to apply for this job in this company. That's the job I'm going to apply. And I'm like, don't do that. Don't send your resume to a recruiter before you've looked if you know someone in the company. Oh, I happen to know someone. Let me connect you with that person. Go to that person and ask them and say, hey, I've looked there looking for this job. Before I do, this is the trick. It's not like, can you just pass the resume? And you say, hey, before I do, do you want to, to have a few minutes? I just want to understand a little bit more about the company so that I can customize my application. What is someone going to do? They want to help. Now, some people are not going to respond, but if they want to help, them and say, sure, get on the phone. I give you some stuff, and you know, if I like you on the phone, which you should be selling yourself at that point, I will be like, you know what? Just send me your resume. I'm going to pass it. Straight away, you go to the top. I, I, you know, again, I haven't sent a resume in a long time, but a resume to a recruiter for a job has been a very, very long time. Uh, now, you have to do it. I'm not saying you should not do it. You have to maximize your opportunity. But if you really start with not like, I'm going after every job in the world in Austin, and then try to find one, but you start with like, this is the 10 companies, this is the 20 companies I want to start first, and I'm going to spend the next three weeks trying to see how many I can penetrate. It's a sales job. Uh, it's, 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 you know, you start, you focus, you customize, you go to the next level, and it's a conversion funnel. Um, so anyway, that's, that's why for me, I think it's important. But if you're really seriously looking for a job, I mean, that little extra step, is important. Um, my wife recently went back to work full time and she had this company where she applied for a job. She got an email saying, can we talk this, this afternoon? And she told me that and I said, well, when you respond, offer, where are they based? Lakeway, which is not too far from where we live. I said, well, why don't you offer and say, yeah, I can talk or I can actually come in your office if you want tomorrow morning at that time. The person responded and first say, no, that's okay, let's just have a conversation. And then two hours later, I sent back and said, can you come tomorrow morning? She's like, oh, I'm going to meet him tomorrow. I'm like, you're wrong. You're going to meet more than one person. She's like, no, nah. I'm like, you're going to meet more than one person. She went the next day. She met with like the guy who was like, asked to put the job. She met with the guy who runs the office. She met with the owner of the company. The conversation was an hour and a half. My point is like, you have to force as well. You have to differentiate. I mean, just think about what everybody else is doing and say, what can I do differently? What is the legal extra that I can do? And so when you prepare and prep for an interview, it's important to prepare well in advance for the interview. And that leads you to, I don't have that problem, uh, but if, if I've met the, if, if I've screened through your resume, and if I, might, I probably would have talked to you, in fact what I do, I actually ask people to do something for me, not because I want to steal ideas, I don't care, that's not what it is, because I want to see the people who actually can, you know, do something extra and think about a problem that I can want them to think about. Uh, and I get them to come. If you come from the office, and I know it's stressful, I was stressed if I got to them. I was. I feel more relaxed now, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not an extravagant, believe it or not. Uh, I don't do this, I don't do public speaking as a job. That's not what I do. Um, but when you walk in, you have to be passionate. And I tell you, when you worked in lots of large companies, large organizations, the person at the front desk is one of the most important person you can find in a company. And it's the one that in any company, I was always joking, I was so always saying, you never piss off Christian at the front desk. And this is what I would do. I would then go and interview people, and then I would go down with them. So I'm like, okay, if I like them, I would go down. And then I would ask, I would turn around and ask and say, how was the person when they came in? And I say, well, very nice, gentle, you know, introducing and saying hi. Okay, that's something to me. Does it, does it mean like that person, if they, they had not done that, they wouldn't get the job? No, it's this little extra. Because ultimately, I'm looking for people that I want to work with, that believe in similar values that I have. So, anyway, I'm just saying being passionate is really, really, really important. And you don't have to be an extrovert to sense that you're passionate. I had a, an employee that I recruited. She's like a computer brain. I'm mean, seriously, I, I, she's, a, she's so smart. And I'm like, 
she was not saying a lot of words, but I could sense, I could see like the brain was working and she was intense and she had the two or three questions she asked were like spot on. And it's because she prepared, but also because she was in that, in, at that moment, at that instant, she was there. Also remember, uh, like I said, you know, if I bring you in, I'm eager to meet you. I mean, it, it sounds like, it's not like, hey, this is like uh, the court, you know, uh, you should be excited, you should be happy. The person who is bringing you in, if, if they just do it for the job and because they have nothing else to do, they should be fired, except if they're a recruiter. But I'm just saying, if it's, if it's a recruiting manager who is like not happy, I mean, to me, I love to meet people, but I'm like, oh crap, like last night, I finished at 6 30 and I'm like, I wanted to finish this thing first. But I went to talk to this guy because he asked me to talk to this guy. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, I sh you don't have to let me drive the conversation. And very, very important. You know, you can drive the conversation. I, I go to interviews and usually I don't have to say a lot. When I used to do that, I would know everything about their kids, their family, the common thing we had, because I would just start with something. And you can start with that. Now, the personal side is one thing, but here's the trick. Every company, every organization that I've been with, at least in the technology space, but I think it applies across, has a business model. And people love to talk about their business model. You go to SolarWinds, and if you want to make them to think about you, they're going to say, hey, so I see on your website, it seems to be like a highly transactional, you know, software company, which, by the way, is the way they describe themselves, so it's not too hard to find. Uh, if you want to really find if it's a public company, you go to the investor relation page, and there, inside that, every year, they have to publish a deck to their analysts and investors about the company, and it describes everything you want to know about the company. But let's say you do that. And at so always, for instance, the business model is important. And you ask them and say, so how does it operate? How, does it, how is it different? That seems really interesting. People will just start to talk about that company. And honestly, it's what, as an employer, that's what we want. I, mean, I can tell you the startup that we are, uh, and I'll get back to that. But how will people believe in what we do first and foremost? And the reason I want them to believe is because it's not going to be easy. And if they don't believe in what we do, they are not going to stay in the job when it's hard. So it's really important, and, and, and business model, you have to use the word business model, but any company, I would argue and say, well, how does it operate like this versus something different? And it can be, again, big, large corporation, it can be state government organizations. Uh, business model might be a little bit different, but there is a business model. They're all correcting, and people love to show and share. Um, and that's, that's, that's a big thing for me in terms of like, uh, how you can make a, a, a difference. Um, and then, this is what I'm looking for when I'm recruiting someone. So, some people have said, but you are very unique in what you're looking for. Some people just look for, they look employees to do the job. They don't want people to be thinking and, and being able to open up and, and share their ideas. You know what? Run away from this company. Now, it's easy to say because unfortunately there's more companies like this. Um, but the day at JP Morgan, so I mean, the company was in, I was in London, quite working for JP Morgan. Uh, the day the guy that I was working with, one day I was like, it's, it's boring, what are we doing? It's boring. And it's, we're not even trying to be smart about it. And it's like, well, what do you expect? We're not here to have fun. You know, I came home and I was like, I promised my parents I would stay 24 months in the same job. I promised my parents I would stay. <laughs> it's been 20 months. I'm resigning tomorrow. <laughs> it's this thing, yeah. To me. <laughs> they, were, they went by mistake, but they don't feel so. um, But what I'm looking for is do you believe in the mission? And I think it's honestly the smaller size of the organizations you're looking for, the requirement is. You know, because you have to believe, you know, if in a small organization, one employee costs a lot of money, it's, it's a bet, it's a risk, you can't make mistakes, that's the important thing. The second thing is, I like to find people who are smarter than me, which is not difficult, right, I can't even spell Marseille, so you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jean-Marc Jean is already smarter than me, you know, so we found that. Um, but it's important for me because I'm a big believer in the power of teams, and I believe that if you have smarter people than you, then they are going to be able to help the company be successful, which means your team is going to be successful, which means my team is going to be successful, and I'm going to be successful. Uh, 
And the most important for me is, will that fit in the team and culture? And it's usually a big disappointment for people saying, but I felt I had the skills. Yes, you had the skills. You had the right resume, you had the skills, you just did not fit in the team and culture. And what can you do with that? Well, you have to find a company that's the right team and culture. Don't try to force it. It's like a bad relationship. Because you're going to spend three months, six months to find a job. Uh, some people, it's longer. Um, and then what, six months later, you're going to start again? The ROI is not good. Better find like company with the right fit. Now, you can do it. Sometimes company it looks great on the paper and then you're disappointed, which is back channels. Like, we do back channels on candidates. I mean, they give me references. I pretty much never ask the references because I can go and ask some other people. You should do back channels on companies. I, I've moved out of some companies because I thought like something stinky based on what I've done. And I was right. But the job itself, the pay was great, and honestly, uh, I, you know, in the early days in London, uh, I pushed back on some jobs, and then I went to work and do sandwich. And people were like, what? You're doing a sandwich? You've got like a business? And I was like, it's pretty fun to do, I wanted to understand the business. I spent like three weeks. But the point is like, I was like, I'd rather go and do and do something on the side till I find the right thing. Uh, so so it's, it's, it's really important, again, being passionate. And then, being persistent, persistent enough. I think you guys from what your network is, is expanding, I think you already do that. But this is a thing I do with pretty much every candidate I care. Uh, I'm going to ask at the end and say, if you have one more question for me, feel free to send me an email. And I wait. <laughs> Out of ten, one will send me an email. One. It does not matter the question. I always, and when I was doing it, I was always trying, ah, but I'm not going to ask, I'm ready for that, ask all the questions, I'm going to look them. I just ask one question. And I send it on the weekend. Because that means like, well, just thinking about it, I'm serious. Um, but sending an email, sending a follow-up, um, you've met me. You might have done, if you've done your job and, and advanced in advance of working for the company, you might already have connected with other people. But don't just stuck with me, connect with other people. I get people saying, but I get stuck with the recruiter. Why are you just talking to the recruiter? You should have already connected with other people within the organizations, if you can, through your LinkedIn, through your network. I mean, you guys used to have a network of every company in town. I mean, Austin, I mean, the whole six degree relation in Austin, it's like one degree in the technology space. It's pretty much like, you know, I'm not going to use bad words, but everybody knows each other. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's very incestuous. Let's use that. That's okay for Texas? No. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> well, the first time I came in Texas and I had to sign the employment, whatever, again, because uh, I, I didn't transfer as, a, as a, I, I quit and I had to apply for the same company. I had to go through these things and I was reading about the way you behave and I was like, I can't sign that. The BPFH was ballistic with me. I'm like, I can't sign. This is not a human being. This is descriptions of, you know, of course I'm going to go to people and, you know, you know, just be natural. And it went ballistic and then I signed because I realized I was pushing the envelope a little too much. Um, <laughs> but be persistent and send a thank you note. There's something in marketing right now, if you do a little bit of marketing, there's something called a camp based marketing, which makes me laugh because it's like, <coughs> This is the new thing, right? Marketers always have the new stuff. It's really what people have done for a like, couple of centuries because that's what you do in marketing. Uh, but the mail, the, the physical piece of paper, is coming back. Because people are tired with a freaking phone and iPhone, iPad, and all this stuff. So if you go to an interview and you send a little note, simple, little, simple, very, don't have to make it, and you send a personal note, that can be an email. And do an email to each person that you've met. I can guarantee as soon as you send to two people, we've already exchanged the email and we're like, oh, this is cool, this is nice, oh yeah, that's interesting. Important, makes you again be something very different. Um, and the last piece of advice, uh, and that's again, my way of saying, but you've forgotten about what dating is all about. So this is actually my wife um, that I met online 12 years ago. Uh, I was not expected to meet her online, she's actually from Peru. Um, but if you really think about it, I don't know how many people have done online dating and please don't raise your hands if you feel uncomfortable with it, um, <laughs> or any dating in general. But when you are doing online dating, what's interesting is you build a profile. That's your resume. That's your personality. You're trying to do things which are different. Now, some people rely on it. Uh, too bad for them. Uh, but in the job search, you should be really do that. Be, be, be transparent. I mean, I've interviewed people saying, 
in their job descriptions, they had, well, I want to be in marketing, but before that I was a police officer in a correctional office, in a correctional uh, penitentiary in Texas. And me, I was like, I want to meet that woman. Because <laughs> I could see she was potentially a good fit, but I was just like, that got my attention. Uh, you know, not that I tend to go there and I wanted to know how it's going to be there. Um, but I got my attention. But if you think about it, you have a profile. I mean, you had to, at the time in this whole online dating system, you had to figure out a way to get someone to pay attention to you. There was this whole thing, Wings, if I remember correctly. And I had I'm a bit of a, uh, a mind of like funnel type mind, so I had to figure out like if I was to ask like 10, I would get one to respond, or two to respond, and one would actually would want to go on a date. Because I was doing this blindly just to see what it was. I was curious about the system more than anything else. I was not expecting anything. Uh, and this one, I met my wife, and I always said I would marry a, a, a five foot ten Swedish woman. And you can see my wife is a five foot two dark woman, which is another thing. Let you, as much as I've told you to be very focused and understand what you want and pick companies, let let it's a flow. Let it come. Sometimes you will find a job not where you're expecting, and that's going to be the best job. That's the best wife I, best wife I had. <laughs> <laughs> she likes to hear that, but the truth is, I actually was engaged at some point before I, I, I met my wife. So I could, I, I could argue that I, I made decisions. Um, that's what I had for you guys today. Uh, hopefully, I hope it was useful, interesting. There was something, again, there's only one little thing that you can take away from it that I have achieved my goal. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. You know, you mentioned you know comparing folks applying for jobs and so on. Now, if you see someone that says, "I would like to apply for," and you see someone saying, "I would like to offer my services as," which which one would you pick and why? Uh, in my case, services, I would think of cons of a consultant. Would you repeat the question so it gets on the video? So the question is, if I had two cover letter and one say, I would like to apply for this role, or I would like to offer my services for this role. For me, in marketing, because I deal with lots of companies that offer their services, consultants who want to try to sell me their services, I would not react to that. But that's me, again. You know. When you were talking a while ago, you mentioned something about back channel. What did you mean by that? So the question is about uh, what I meant when I was mentioning about back channels. So um, when you're going through a job process and when you're going through an interview, if someone is interested, they usually will ask you for your references. And it will supply free references. I will go and usually through the network of people in the organizations, the company, I will try to find other people that have been connected with you, might have worked with you, that you have not listed from your references. Now, I might talk to your references, but I will also try to get different perspective from other people. That's what I call back channel. So for you, when you are looking for a job, you might be talking to the recruiter, you might have talked to one or two people that said indeed. Um, but if you haven't talked to other people, you might have talked to a recruiter, you might have said, hey, that job seems interesting, but you know, is it exactly what I want to do? Then there's nothing wrong to engage with someone, connect with them and say, hey, I'd love to connect, I've recently applied at LinkedIn uh, for this type of role, and I would love to understand a little bit more about the culture of the company. I can get them to speak to what they'd like to speak. Now, maybe five out of ten people, I don't know, five out of seven won't respond to your LinkedIn request, but you just need one, one or two. And then these people will, I can tell you, it's always amazing, you had a thousand people at the time when I was there. I mean, I would get someone saying, hey, do you happen to know someone like this? And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's one of the candidates. Yeah, they've been reaching out, and uh, I was like, oh, wow, cool. Top of the pipe. That doesn't mean I would recruit them, but it's it's keeping keeping that thing. I mean, people, you finish an interview, uh, and my my wife was always crazy when I was doing that with her, when she was at the for a job. I said, so what's the next step? Well, I don't know. What? <laughs> you did all this effort, you go there, and you haven't asked about the next step. At least you should ask for a time frame. Yeah. That's the minimum thing you can do. For the uh, 50 plus crowd, can you give two or three things that you think they should emphasize on that will help? What do you mean by like 50, 50, 50, 50 plus age crowd? Yes. What two or three things that I'm not too far. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> some of them are way past that. Yeah. <laughs> but what are the uh, things that we can, we can show? So I would play, but, well, it depends what type of jobs you're looking for. I think it depends the level of the jobs you're looking for. Um, but personally, I would, I would play on the, I know what hard work means. I've done a lot of stuff. And I think that one of the challenge, you know, uh, I, would, I would apply a little bit of like, and I think that what I can bring as well is, is, is because of my past experience, I've got some good knowledge, and, and maybe also I can bring something that I can help also in the younger generation. I mean, the, the, one of the jobs I had in marketing operations first, and I started to look, because it's typical when you're in a startup, we find someone with a few years of experience and will pay them, you know, X, which is usually a lower on the pay scale. And then I went through, tried to recruit, couldn't find someone, I was just frustrated because I even had someone I made an offer on a Friday, said yes, on a Saturday, on a Monday, called and said, you know what, I don't really want to work in the domain, I prefer to work downtown because I can go for a beer with my friends. Oh. <laughs> the thing is, I, I still, I'm still connected to that person, but I still think he's a good person. And actually, I think he did the right thing for me. He helped me not to recruit him, and he did find a job which is really interesting, and now he works for another company where I've helped him to place it. So it's not, I, I'm not, you know, I, I, I don't have a bad feeling, but I was just like, that's the generation, right? So to me, it's like, I ended up recruiting someone who is in her 50s, uh, who has started with banking like 30 years ago, who has done it again and again and again. Now, I have to deal with the fact that she takes no crap, uh, she, has, <laughs> she has no filters, and I'm probably the only one who can manage in the organization. <laughs> but, so, I, I, I think, I, it's, I don't know the answer, I mean, because I haven't done it myself, but uh, it's, 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 you know, if you're looking for a sales job, just look at what people are looking for these days. They feel like a sales job is someone who comes in, it's, it's, stupid. it's either a, a young kid, two years experience, is just going to be super energized, motivated, so that's what people are looking for, or they are looking for someone who already has an entire portfolio of companies and experience and will just want to replace. It's not a good job to look for. <coughs> Um, but I would say, as you get older, at least I would say, you know, we are parenting. Parenting teaches a lot. <laughs> and there's things that you can potentially reply. So I don't know. The really depends. It's hard. Go. Um, two days ago, I had a job interview with uh, an after doing homework, you suggested. I was talking to the hiring manager, and I made some, based on what I was being hired for, I made some suggestions. Um, tiny suggestion about something I thought that could improve their website. And so my general question is, even if it directly applies to the job position, and it's part of your passion, it's part of your uh, job experience, they do ever, ever give a suggestion about something that is obvious on website or about company. Because you're talking about, well, this is how I can help you. This is, this is what I can do for your company. But it's so pointed that it might sound like an insult. And that's what I'm saying. But I didn't. Did anyone have the question? So when you're going through, like, when, when you're going through like, an interview process, and let's say, and I think it, the, the comment you made was related to the job that you're applying for. Uh, so if you're applying for a job and then you're having conversations with a company manager, how much are you going to point at things that you think that could be improved? I mean, that's, that's what you're saying. Um, I like it. That's a good free recruiter, but, um, but I think it's a good thing. Uh, I personally say it as a good thing because it means like you've done your homework and that you're making suggestions. Uh, it's tricky when you do that, for instance, and say, I think your website sucks. And you're not <laughs> either you use the word sex or you're basically applying for a job in finance and you're like, what are you thinking about anyway? That's not related. Uh, but what I would do is like I would bring it back to always this concept of business model. And say, so how do you guys operate? So I mean in marketing, I mean what are you apply for a marketing job, so what are the KPIs? What what how how are you guys measured? How does it how does it measure within the context? How does the CEO know that you guys are doing a good job? It's tricky, it's not a big but every organization is right. What's the, what's, what success looks like in finance? What success looks like in the HR department? If I was to do this job, what would you expect me, what would be my, my measure of success? That's a really good question, right? So, and, and, and you might say, by the way, I've seen that you guys are saying that you're doing this, but let's say you're applying for 
customer marketing journey. I see that you guys are talking about like how you have lots of customers, but when I really look at your site, I'm only seeing like five or six case studies. I'm assuming what you want me to do is to come in and try to help grow that to maybe 20 case studies. It doesn't come across as a negative and saying, look, you've got shit on the, your, your, your table. It's really come across as like, well, yeah, you've already matched the job to one of the things that we need you to do. So that's, that's, that's how I would apply. Any other questions? Great. Well, thank you very much. Oh, uh, my question is how to transfer skills which you learn in one industry and apply to some other, other, another industry? Because it's an ever-changing time, so we cannot stick with one paradigm. So how can we leverage the experience that we have? In one yeah, it, it's a tough one. Mm -hmm. And so the question is how do you basically go from one industry, I mean, people were talking about earlier, I mean, whether let's say you've been in the medical device business and you want to go into the airline business. Um, it really, I mean, for some people it's going to be easy, far easier. If you're a finance manager, if you're finance and doing finance in one company, you can do finance in another company. That's, but, you know, accountant is one job, it's the same in another company. Uh, if you are, you know, I think someone was mentioning, like, you know, doing lab work and then trying to go into something which is, you know, maybe uh, completely different, that's going to be a challenge. That makes it, that, that's going to force you to be even better than doing what I'm talking about. And you're going to have to convince people that it's got a really good skill. It, and it works, right? I mean, I, I interviewed someone last week who was telling me that his wife actually knew our CEO because she applied for a job at Conigo back in the days. Uh, she had a medical, not a medical, but she had studied turtles. She went to Corpus Christi to the Total World Center, whatever, and then she realized when she was there that unless the person who runs the program dies, she will never kind of move up. <laughs> Which, you know, is a point where you, you like to do something passionate, but it's a point where you also have to keep it for yourself and for your family. Um, and then she applied uh, for a job as an account, uh, account manager. Which is completely different, but the person at the time at Columbia was smart enough, and unfortunately that's, that's going to be kind of to talk to, to say, I really like you, I really like the skills you have, uh, but what we need you to do, if you can do this HTML thing, uh, that would be interesting, can you take that and, and by Tuesday, I send you something and by Tuesday, can you show, show me that you can do it? She went, oh, she said yes. No, <laughs> She went home, her husband, you know, little Oh, the guy we know, her husband knew a little bit about HTML. She came up with a thing and said, yeah, that sounds great. She got the job and she had a, a fantastic career at this company. So, it, but it's more and more work, more extra. I mean, it's people like to, it's the world we live in. I mean, people like to put you into the bucket and think that you're in the bucket. And if people honestly, these companies are like, oh, we don't like to recruit people more than 50 years old, they're like, I'm not going to change that. And the thing I like to say is like, so everybody in the executive team is less than 50? Right? And you can prove well. I mean, I've, I've met people, I mean, I've met lots of friends, but I've met lots of people who are not my friends. That's part of recruiting process. Because I, I'm, I'm blunt. And I'm like, that's what you're looking for? It's not for me. I mean, you know, I... So, and it's... I know it's hard for people saying, well, you're saying you have to pick a job, or you could pick a company, pick the job, but seriously, that's not the real world. It can be the real world. You just have to do the extra work. Just, I don't know how much we have, so. We have about five more minutes. Okay, so I'm just, you know. I think that comes back to time and research that you mentioned before, because you can go find a company that you want to work in a job that's something new, and look at the people in that job and see what their backgrounds mm -hmm. are, and then go out and do the back channel and mm -hmm. reach out to them and find out how they transition from biology to account management mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, looking at patterns, I mean, uh, I was telling you earlier, I mean, there's two jobs, uh, and there's someone I've recruited in our company that uh, I went to find. And the reason I went to find is because back three years ago, there was this movement called growth marketing, and I was curious about who in Austin had the word growth in their LinkedIn profile. And there was only a few people, because it was mostly in the Bay Area. Uh, and I met, uh, and I connected with Bridgman, who was running this kind of growth thing, and I said, well, I'm looking for someone, but I can't afford to pay anybody in the have any internship. She said, I want to talk to you guys, because I've looked at what you guys are doing, and that's interesting. We had an hour conversation at lunch, and I said, I think you're, you're fantastic, but I can't afford to, to pay you. I want to come for the interview. No, I keep telling you, I can't afford to, you know, and, and it was not because I wanted just to 
hard work to come in and pay it. But the point is, like, I went to find because you had something unique, then, you know, and I was looking for skill set, not her experience. Like, she didn't care. Uh, she, 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 she was doing artificial intelligence. Right, so this is a completely different thing. Uh, and then ultimately now, she's came on my team, we moved her into a different team, and now she works in customer success. That's one thing, by the way, folks. Customer success is a big movement, and there's going to be more and more companies recruiting customer success people. So customer success managers is something that I would look for. Um, and there's, there's not, there's not a, an army of people that can come up. And customer success manager, at least in the technology space, is basically you sold the software. And surprise, companies have finally understood that when someone buys something, they actually should use it. <laughs> and we should help them to use it because if we keep them happy, they are actually buy more. And it costs less than finding a new customer. Surprise! No, surprise, but that's, that seems to be. And this, this role of customer success, it's not a sales job per se, but it's like managing the relationship with customers. There's a hell of demand for this type of. And that you can probably come with lots of different backgrounds because it's about being confident on the phone, being able to deal with people, managing you know, expectations, there's a bit, a bit of project management, even project management, that's a great thing. So anyway, there's, there's, there's ways to also reinvent yourself. Anything else? Who said me? Who said me? Over here. <laughs> so my question is uh, about the back channels that you mentioned. Um, what I, I mean, how do you protect the candidate? Let's say the candidate is actually or has a job somewhere, or is doing an informational interview. In that case, you know, if you go and ask somebody, usually when the person gives a reference, they know that they are even either inform them that they are looking for a job, and when you ask, when you go ask uh, someone else who is not who doesn't have that information. Aren't you in some ways putting them in a little bit of a jeopardy for the existing job in some ways? Uh, so, but so me, I will do the back channels at the point where the person has given me a reference. Mm. Right. And I will say, can you give me the reference? And you know, I think we know people in common. So yeah, why leave them to this? Now, I would, I would flip it up. I actually believe that there's nothing wrong to be very open. I mean, my, I'm always looking for, I'm always, I, I'm all, my mind is always like, what's going to be my next two jobs? Right, I mean, if my boss was to come and say, but you've been meeting with quite a few people, I see that, and I'm like, yeah, I'm networking. I, I, I don't have anything to hide. And, you know, honestly, so to me, I, I, don't, I don't feel as a candidate, you should feel like you have to be so secret about it. Um, but I would personally, I would say, hey, you're at the point where I'm going to do, talk to your recruiters, and I probably have all the people I know that I might connect with. Now, if you tell me, Please, please, please don't reach out to anybody which is within this company except this one person I've, I've asked for you. I would respect that. But it's more the case of like, I want to really flip it over and think about why do you worry? You've made a decision to go and get another job.